Hello again everybody, welcome to Test Flight in the Mirage 2000. This is the first module released by Razbam Simulations. It covers the Mirage 2000C, the Interceptor variant, used by the French Air Force and exported in a very similar configuration to India, Taiwan, the UAE, and several other nations. It's a very maneuverable fourth generation fighter, comparable systems and flight dynamics wise to the F-16, so it's going to make a very very good fit for DCS. So what I'm going to do here is, just like in the other test flight series, put the aircraft through its paces, go through systems and procedures, and then be ready to take on actual missions and campaigns knowing what I'm doing. Now it's not going to be a review because obviously I wouldn't be flying it if I didn't recommend it, and it's not going to necessarily be a set of tutorials, although I will go through systems and procedures in detail, and if you're looking to follow along and learn the aircraft as we go, well, feel free. Now, to start things off, as usual, I've taken the aircraft up just on an initial flight to map control. So I have all the axes for flight controls mapped, and I'm just getting a feel for how the aircraft handles so that once I do get it back up into the air again, I'll know what to expect and I'll know what normal is so that I can really spot it if I have missed something when it comes to the flight control setup or just systems in general. So, the first thing that I notice is that it flies very differently from the other aircraft that we have in DCS, and that's because it is heavily dependent on the flight control system, or totally dependent on the flight control system. It's a fly-by-wire aircraft, meaning that the control stick inputs that I make aren't necessarily going to be determining how it flies and how the flight control surfaces deflect, everything is fed into the flight control computers and then the computers just based on airspeed, altitude, uh, alpha and beta, just all kinds of other inputs to determines how to deflect the flight controls to make it do what I want it to do and for that reason it is very very different and it's very very intuitive to fly. The nose just sort of stays where you put it. If I put it into a bank it stays in the bank and granted the nose does come down a little bit but it's very very easy to fly this way and if you flown Falcon 4.0 and the F-16 the way that it's modeled in Falcon it is very very similar in style to that so you'll feel right at home as we get things going here so I've got an RWR hit for a Sukhoi 27 back behind me now the other thing that I do on my initial first flight in the aircraft is just to look around the cockpit and get an overall feel for where things are and how the cockpit is laid out. Now, I'm going to be a little bit behind or a lot behind the curve on this because the cockpit is in French and we don't have any English language cockpit mods or any English language translations really of the real flight manual. All that we really have is the flight manual that comes with the module itself, which is in fact very, very good, and that's what I'm going to be using almost exclusively as we go here. So on the cockpit, let me just sort of start around here at the bottom left and work my way around and just see where things are in general as we go. Now, it appears that we have some, let me see, flight controls and just other important critical systems right there. I'll be able to zoom in and get some more detail here. Okay, this is communications and volume controls, it's like some trim settings right there. This is the radar control panel and of course the throttle and we have a HOTAS, hands-on throttle and stick set up here so I'll be able to map a lot of these buttons and a lot of these functions that we see to their counterparts on the real world. I have a Thrustmaster HOTAS, a Warthog HOTAS. So let's see, we have some more uh, flight control looking things right here, leading edge slats and some other engine related controls. Let me see, coming up to communications this is lighting right here, and I've got landing gear a handle right there. For some reason, I think this is uh, just one of those little open beta things that's going to get uh, a tweaked. And this is the, like day one, hour one of me having this aircraft. It just came out, and a lot of the stuff is going to be very subject to change as we go. But I do have a light in the gear handle, which is kind of odd, but I'll, I'll troubleshoot that later. Okay, so right here we have flight control system controls, and that's just an indicator right there. That looks like, yeah, that's an emergency jettison button. Okay, we have weapon system controls right here, so I'm going to use this panel to select weapons, select weapons mode, and this is like the master arm switch. Yep, exactly what it is, master arm switch. And this is a, yeah, selective jettison and selective jettison switch cover. Okay, coming up here we have countermeasure controls, so... I have 112 chaff cartridges, 16 flare cartridges, 
no peek out here. It's so nice with this, this flight control system. You just put the nose up there and you leave it. You don't have to do any trim at all. And if you use your rudder, well, you, you won't use your rudder unless you're in a very, very specific situation. And that's the last thing that you would want to do with this aircraft because it does everything for you. Okay, coming up to main flight control instruments. So, uh, standard altimeter, airspeed indicator, uh, vertical velocity indicator, uh, attitude direction indicator. Although this is a little bit different than what we've seen in previous modules as well. Because the ADI, in addition to pitch, is going to serve as sort of like a compass as well. So we can tell at a glance that we're heading about, oh, about a 109 heading. Just using the ADI. And then we have the standby ADI right down here. Now... We have this switch, and this is going to be a fly-by-wire, sort of like an emergency disconnect for the fly-by-wire system, and that's kind of a bad way to describe it, but I'll, I'll get into all that as we go as well. Okay, these are autopilot controls as we come around to the HUD and the HUD pedestal. Okay, so we have HUD controls right there. That's my AOA indexer right there, and then on the pedestal itself, we have the radar display and associated controls, and then I have... Okay, IFF stuff down there below it, and indicators for well, whatever that is. It's off-scale low, so that might not even be working yet. Okay, that's probably cabin pressure altitude right there, and looks like a couple of work-in-progress panels uh, since they aren't really showing anything. Okay, coming around here to the right, I've got, okay, that's an accelerometer, RWR right there, HSI for navigation, I have additional weapon system controls. I have fuel quantity and fuel related instrumentation right there. Engine instruments. Okay, fuel flow right there. And coming on down to, okay, master caution and warning panel, electrical system controls. And what are you? Your little. It's in liters, possibly oxygen, whatever it is. It's, <laughs> it's zero, so. That's not a good thing, but probably just work in progress with the open beta. Okay, now we have the INS. So we have a inertial navigation system that is not like it is in the A-10, backed up by GPS. It's strictly INS as far as guidance right here. So getting into the nuts and bolts of this is going to be interesting. A lot of the stuff that we associate with navigation in DCS is done for us and is kind of simplified in a lot of the Flame Eclipse 3 aircraft that... This is very much equivalent to as far as, well, not as far as systems modeling. This is a full-up DCS level sim, but as far as, you know, counterparts to it, F-15, Sukhoi-27, MiG-29, you know, counterparts in that sense, it's very simplified. So having this full-on INS is going to be, boy, those guys are really going to town on the radar. I wonder if I can turn this off. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, got it. Yeah, the switch for the RWR was right down here on the next panel, in fact. So, okay, that's cleaned up for now. We'll turn it back on in a little bit. Maybe whatever that is will go away. So, let me see. RWR controls right here, obviously, and uh, just ECM-type controls in general. Then we have some more navigation controls for TACAN and ILS. Coming back here, we're going to have, let me see, this looks like ECS, Environmental Control System controls and then above that in fact I skipped this panel but this is more navigation INS related uh, controls uh, coming down to more lighting panels then fuel pump and fuel controls and then some circuit breakers and this is striking me as a very very simple aircraft I mean there's looking around there's a lot of stuff but it does seem very very organized and it doesn't seem like there's a lot here that's going to be that complicated to run, maybe with the exception of the INS, but everything else seems to be uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. Now, I think at this point, let me go back to the interface and explore that a little bit, and we'll see what all is included as far as missions and things to do, and granted this is, remember, an open beta, day one, hour one of the release, so a lot of the stuff may not be there that is planned for later, but yeah, I'll be right back in the interface. Now, in the interface, under Instant Action, we have a number of options here, so the standard fare when it comes to free flights, cold starts, takeoffs and landings, and that sort of thing. I came back to DCS 1.5 for this part, and we also have some Instant Actions on the Nevada terrain if you're running DCS 2.0. Now, under Single Missions, we have a number of options here, and I haven't tried any of these, but it looks like your standard fare, just intercept, air-to-air -air type missions. We don't have any campaigns or training modules available, although I'm sure those are 
planned, although I have no idea uh, what time frame any of these guys are on when it comes to adding that sort of thing. But as far as campaigns, I would be very surprised if they, if the developers aren't planning on doing something with the Strait of Hormuz map. It's a great fit, both for the French Air Force and of course the UAE, who operates a very similar variant. In fact, this includes a UAE skin. Now, under options, we don't have anything to deal with under the special tab for the Mirage, so at this point, once you have it installed, you're ready to go. So let me get back into the aircraft and we'll start to go through some systems and digging into the manual. And I'm going to do this way, way out of order from the way that I like to learn an aircraft and usually go about doing things. The kneeboard is not implemented on the Mirage just yet, so when it comes to following step-by-step -step procedures, I have become so dependent on the kneeboard, I just can't imagine flying or doing procedures without that. So I'm going to start with some aircraft systems that don't require quite as much interaction with the manual and see how far we can get. This may or may not work, so... Well, I don't know, I'll make it work, whatever we have to do. So let me go ahead and get into the aircraft and get things going. Okay, picking things up in the sky over Nevada, and I'm going to cut this first video a little bit short here, just end it with something simple. Before really digging into the systems, I'm going to actually begin with the autopilot and the radar system in the next video. But yeah, to end this one, I'm going to just simply shoot down a Suku 27 with uh, one of my Magic 2 missiles. So let me go ahead and go Master Armed R. And I'm going to select the magic on the panel, and I've got the tone in my headset now. At this point, all I have to do is find my targets, and I have, conveniently, a group of Suko 27s out here orbiting over Dogbone Lake. In fact, yeah, there's one right there, two of them right there, that I'm going to use in the next video to employ the radar on, and to, well, just tool around doing stuff like this, figuring out how to employ weapons. Okay, so I've got my magic missile up and seeking i just need to find me a target okay that's a good one right there got a good lock and let me go ahead and bring it up and fire the missile i have an x right there i think that was sort of a do not shoot type thing okay evaded with some flare which wasn't quite as effective as that aircraft would have liked i have two more three more right up there off my nose it should be the same procedure just bring it on around I'm going to line it up with the cross and the HUD. And when I'm in range, take them out. Okay, I've lost them here momentarily. Let me pick them up again. Okay, directly off my nose, I got yeah, two or three of them. Okay, there's one right there, but I've got the lead one. This is kind of a bad angle to have myself on. I should have broke off and gone for the other one, but okay. Let me bring it on up. I'll take the shot from sort of a long range. And see how this does. Now it's fire from a good weapon, so I can break off at this point. I need to, to evade these other Sukhois, but... Yeah, that's as easy as it gets when it comes to employing a missile. And I'll get into a lot more detail about the capabilities, ranges, and exactly what I did right there when it comes to setting up the panels on that in the next video and video after next. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to cut this one short right here and come back fresh in the next video with radar employment. So if you want to see these as they come out, feel free to subscribe to the channel or follow on Twitter. And if you want to help me out, consider leaving a like on the video. That greatly increases the chances of this showing up in YouTube search results. And that helps get the word out to people who aren't necessarily part of the community, who are just doing random searches for DCS and Mirage stuff on YouTube. That's in fact where the majority of my views come from. So that'd be much appreciated. And I'll be back very, very soon. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.